Good morning, people of God. Welcome and um, thank you for being with me this morning, Martin here of Trun of Ministry. And um, um, I have an awesome word this morning. Um, my theme this morning is, if you can see, is Joel, the prophet in the Old Testament, Peter and John. And I think um, they all were great prophets of God. And um, I want you to focus this morning to see how these three prophets have prophesied and how um, things came together like a puzzle piece. I believe you are going to be blessed. So um, if you have your Bible, you may turn to, and I'm going first going to read to you John 7. Now John 7 is the writer, but um, it is Jesus that is speaking here. And um, I want you to hear the words. John 7 verse 38. He says, He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, so the scripture has said somewhere, he that believe on Jesus, on me, out of his belly shall flow rivers. All right, out of his belly, he that believe on me. So now there is rivers in our belly. It sounds strange, rivers. So this is not literal rivers. It is a spiritual thing that will be in men, a river, something coming out of men, all right? But this, he spake of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, which they believe on him, should receive. But the Holy Ghost was not yet given. The Holy Spirit is not yet given when Jesus said this to the people. If you want to thirst, come and drink of me, all right? John wrote it, Jesus said, because Jesus was not yet glorified. So first, we need to see that Jesus needs to be glorified before the Holy Spirit can be outpoured in men. All right, I'm going to draw a line now. I love my timelines, and I know you love it as well, because this is very important, the timeline, there is Jesus and the cross. All right. So here, Jesus would say, yeah, in his three and a half years of ministry, all right, I'm going to make it like this. Yeah, he would say that um, if you believe on me, you can receive the waters, and the waters is the Holy Spirit within you, in your belly. But first, Jesus needs to be glorified, all right, so he said it. Yeah, all right, in Matthew, but, uh, I mean in John, he said it in John, but first he needs to be glorified. Now we must understand that glorified, John would say, glorified means he is enlightened. There is a light put upon him. He is being glorified or lifted up. Then we know that glorified, this says Jesus, that I will be glorified when you lifted me up on the pole, on the cross. All right. So first Jesus need to die on the pole, on the cross. Then the Holy Spirit will be outpoured within you like rivers in your belly. All right. So you must see that. First glorified and then the Holy Spirit. I'm going to make it like this. Holy Spirit. All right. You must see that. Now, I want you to turn to Joel. Joel 2. Joel is the Old Testament prophet that prophesied about a specific event that was so awesome that Peter stood in Acts 2. He said, this is that spoken, all right? Acts 2 verse 16, this is that spoken by the prophet Joel. We will read that a little bit later, but I want you to go to Joel 2. So we must understand what is Joel saying to men. And this is awesome, awesome. I want you to turn to Joel 2 verse 1. All right, now 
What is so awesome of Joel 2? It started off with a verse and it ends with a verse. So I want to read those two verses for you. And then I'm going to go to Acts and read that two verses for you. And then you will see, oh boy, this is truly the same. All right. What Peter is saying and Joel is saying. All right. So John, we have already spoken on that. I cannot give you all the scriptures this morning. Maybe this is part one. We will see. Um, I go into part two. But I'm so happy to give this to you and show you the awesome power and the glory that is upon you as Christians. All right. Joel 2 verse 1 says, Blow the trumpet in Zion. Now Zion is in the church. But this, or the place in Zion, the people of God is Zion. All right. The people that are delivered. So blow the trumpet in Zion. This is not the normal Israel, you know, the people of God. This is in Zion. Zion. Listen. And sound an alarm on my holy mountain. So this is the people that is in the holy mountain. All right. With God. Because God stays in the mountain. In the holy mountain. And he is Zion. But the church is also Zion in the Bible. I cannot go into deepness with all. But you know that. All right. Blow the trumpet. That means speak it aloud. Alarm. Alarm this. And that's what I'm doing this morning. I blow the trumpet. In my holy mountain, let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. All right, so there's a word tremble. So I'm going to write here a word tremble. Uh, like that, tremble. I believe this is that. But above tremble, I'm, I may, maybe I must write to you, Joel. All right, there's Joel. Then I'm going to write Peter. All right, and, and then I'm going to write John. I want you to see how they say the same type of things that we can see things coming together like a puzzle piece. All right, so Joel, Peter and John. He says, blow. The inhabitants must tremble. So we do not think. Listen, Acts 2, outpouring of Holy Spirit says go to go and see what Joel is saying Joel is saying the inhabitants must tremble they must fear because something great is going to happen not fear and run for their lives but submit under his glory a mighty hand the Lord Jesus Christ is going to do something for the day of the Lord cometh all right so Joel say the day of the Lord cometh. And we know Peter is speaking on that same day. And he says, when the day of Pentecost has fully come. So, yeah, tremble. And then the day of the Lord. All right. The Lord cometh. The day of the Lord cometh. Peter would say, when the day of Pentecost has fully come. All right. So Pentecost is the outpouring of Holy Spirit. But it means fully come. So it started off somewhere. And now it's fully here. Alright. So it started off here. And it's fully there. And go and see in Acts 2 verse 16. This is what Joel said. So Joel has a two part thing. Yes. He has a two-part thing. So it started off at the day and it is going until the fully Pentecost comes. All right. A two things. And we need to understand that. All right. On a timeline. That is why um, uh, Jewel says, blow the trumpet for and tremble for the day of the Lord cometh. For it is nigh and at hand. That means it is close. Close to, to us. Alright. So, um, that was the first. Alright, the first. 
uh, verse of Joel 2 verse 1. Acts 2 verse 1 says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. So they were all in one accord, all right, in one place. I'm going to write here, when the day of Pentecost fully come, yeah, fully come, they were in one accord. I'm going to write that down. They are in one accord. All right, already they are one. Okay, then it finished, I said, Joel 2 verse 31 says, The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass, whosoever shall come, call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Do you hear what Joel is saying at the end? All right, listen what Acts 2 verse 20 says. We, go, come, we will come back to what it says about the sun and the things. Acts 2 says, verse 20 and 21 says, The sun shall be turned into darkness. Well, he's also speaking of the sun into darkness. And the moon into blood before the great and notable day of the Lord come. So Peter speaks of a notable day. It is a day that we must notice. It's notable. All right. Notable day. And, and, and Joel says it is a day of tremble. All right. For the day of tremble, day of the Lord will come. The great tremble day. All right. Something tremble, you must tremble, submit under this. Things is going to shake things and change things. Shape and change things. Listen to that word. Change and shape things. I'm going to read to you something. All right. <laughs> it says, and the notable day of the Lord come, and it shall to come to pass. Acts 2 verse 21, Peter says, and it shall come to pass, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Oh boy. So that means that for sure, that Joel, in Joel 2, is speaking of what Peter said on the day of Pentecost. Alright, now we're going to read stuff in Acts, in the day of Pentecost, and we will see how that speaks of the same as Joel. It's not something to come, it's all things that is there, already there, the sun, and we're going to look at the moon, and the blood, and the fire, all right, and the vapor, and the smoke, it's not literal things, you need to understand prophetic language, all right, because Peter stand up and say, this is that spoken by the prophet Joel. 2,000 years ago. And today, we know prophecy works like th this way. When it started, it will never end. So the fulfillment came, but it, a fulfillment is like the seed came. And then it grows in a tree. And we are in that tree, in the branches. All right. But the seed always starts in Christ Jesus. When he came and be glorified. He was the seed. And a promise was given to the seed. And now everything is in the branch. All right, in the branches of this tree. So that was the, f the beginning and, a, and, a, and the end of Joel. But let's go back. Be uh, before I'm going to read to you Acts, I'm going to read to you Joel 2, verse 2. All right. I want you to see and understand things. Because now Jesus said, First, the Son of Man needs to be glorified. Then the Holy Spirit can come. All right. I said, when we read Joel 2, we see the two things of the glorified, where Jesus needs to first be glorified, and then the Holy Spirit will come. All right. Because we will read, before I'm going to read to you, uh, uh, Joel 2 verse 2. All right. I'm going to read to you now, let you can see what I'm saying is truth. 
Um, just let me go down, down, down. I think it is versus... Um, what is, is it versus 18? No, the Lord is jealous. Joel, um, just let me get it. He's come. It's now sorry, and your heart become it's all right. Sorry about that. I lost that place now. All right, verse 28. All right, sorry about that. I want you to see this. Joel 2 verse 28. All right, Joel 2 verse 28 says, And it shall come to pass afterwards. All right, so Joel started with Joel 2 verse 1. All right, verse 28 says, And it shall come to pass. So I'm going to say a lot of things. And then it shall come pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy that what Peter is saying all right so afterwards so Joel is going to say what what Jesus said about the day of the Lord cometh he needs to be glorified first for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit as water. Holy Spirit as water within you. Afterwards started here. And afterwards. Alright. So Joel says it's a tremble day. The day of the Lord. That's why I said the day of the Lord is not something to come. Because John wrote the book of Revelation as well. Alright. And he says in Revelation 1 verse 9 and 10. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Joel says the day of the Lord is soon at hand. Jesus says first I need to be glorified before I send the Holy Spirit. So Peter speaks of the Holy Spirit and Joel says the day of the Lord. So the day of the Lord is a day of tremble. First will come and afterwards, I will send my spirit on all flesh. That means the day of the Lord finished. All right. The day of the Lord's not something to come. The day of the Lord's finished. And that's why Revelation, the book of Revelation, is the finished work of Jesus Christ of his day. It started off by Jesus being glorified in Revelation 1. And it speaks of what happened on his day when Jesus was on earth. All right. And it finishes in Revelation 22. Those who are thirsty come to me and drink of the water freely. John wrote it in Revelation 22. But also in John, when he wrote John 7, he would say, I speak of the water as Holy Spirit. All right. Water as Holy Spirit then too. To Revelation 22 says, This is the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon you so that you can overcome seven churches. I write to you to your seven churches. All right. And I want you to overcome, but you can only overcome when you hear what Joel has said. There will be a day, a day of the Lord, and God is going to do something. And afterwards, is going to pour Holy Spirit upon men. And you will see how great it is. Alright, that's that. So let's go back to Joel 2 verses 2. Like I said, I cannot read to you everything this morning. Because it's too much. I want you to understand it clearly. So this is maybe um, the first part. Alright, the first part. <laughs> Joel 2 verse 2, listen. This is a day of darkness. All right. So we have read verse 1. The day of the Lord's tremble. 
and it is soon very it's near it's at hand all right it's a day of darkness and gloominess what a day of clouds and thick darkness it's a day of listen to the prophetic words and i'm going to explain it now to you as the morning spread upon the mountains as the morning spread upon the mountains so that means it's a new day because morning is early in the morning it's a new day on the mountains what is the mountains the mountains is the people of god is the mountains all right all nations is the mountains so there's a new day coming like the morning on the mountains spread upon the mountain a great people and strong listen a great people and strong there have not been ever the like you will not get ever people like this when the morning will spread over them the day will come the day of tremble will come Joel 2 Joel 2 and it says neither shall there any be be any more after it you will never get people like this born again people of god that will see the glory of god and the glory of god will be in them even to the years of many generations no generation will rise be all in all generations will people rise like this so no other generation no other kind of people will rise like these people this is a prophetic word what jesus has said now first i need to be glorified there needs to come a day a day of tremble then i'm going to pour out my spirit joel says the day of the lord cometh and you are going to glorify him and there is going to rise a people all right a day of darkness and gloominess i want you to turn to first king 8 verse 11 first king 8 verse 11 this is so awesome listen to prophetic words now this was the temple when solomon solomon uh, you know saul david solomon solomon was the son of david and he built the temple and then they dedicated to the lord all right at first before all the bad things happen but listen first king 8 verse 11 that day when they dedicated to the lord so the high priest could not stand to minister so a cloud came in in the building in the temple and the priest could not stand the minister that means they fall they fell down under the glory listen so the priest could not stand to minister because of the cloud of the glory of the lord had filled the house of the lord all right so the cloud is the glory of the lord that filled the house of the lord then Solomon spake, the Lord said, he would dwell in thick darkness. All right, so this is the explanation. What happened here? We are dedicating the temple and now there came a cloud and that was the glory of the Lord came in the place. And the priest started to shake and fall to the ground. They could not minister to the people. Now Solomon stood up and said wow this is what jesus said this is what god said he said he will stay in thick darkness so we have cloud then we have glory and then we have thick darkness all right speaking of god's presence now joel 2 verse 2 says it is a day of darkness there's that word and gloominess gloom it's spooky it's smoky gloominess a day of clouds <laughs> a day of clouds and thick darkness what is he saying when he used these words he says there is a day where the presence of god will come upon men and then he says 
and the morning shall come upon the mountains. The sun will rise upon the people of God. You can see what I'm saying? Listen, we need to understand because Peter speaks of what Joel is saying. And we need to know what Joel is prophesying. That's verse 2. Oh, this is so awesome. All right, verse 3. A fire devour before them. There is coming a people. Fire will devour before them. Why before them? We will now see at the back as well. But before them because we see, we look to the front and we speak to the things to the front. A fire will devour before them. And that fire is always Holy Spirit. I'm going to give you scriptures. And behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the garden of Eden before them. You know Adam and Eve was in the garden of Eden. And that was a precious place, a place of blessing. The land is like a garden of Eden before you. That means God is giving you the land and blessings around you and in front of you. But fire is before you and the flame burneth. All right, behind you. At behind them, it's a desolate wilderness. Yeah, nothing shall escape them. So wherever they walk, they burn things. They burn things, not literal, but spiritual, because they will be like flames and fire. All right, listen, that's why they are burning. At the back, if the Wilderness is burning at the back of them. Nothing shall escape them. That means they have full authority wherever they place their feet. God is going to give them the authority with His Spirit to rule there. And when I thought on that, I heard Joshua 1 verse 3. Just go there. Joshua 1 verse 3. Now Moses is dead. Now God is speaking to Joshua and he says, Every place that your soul and your food shall tread upon, that have I given unto you. I give you authority every place, as I said unto Moses. I want to say that to you as well. Joel prophesied, there is going to be a day, a terrible day, Submit under this day. It is soon at hand. And the fire of God will come. Alright. And it will be a strong people. Fire burn before them. Because they are going to speak spirit. And at the back of them. God will give them the land. You will see this guy. Where he went. Before and afterwards. Oh boy. God was here. You can hear. You can hear. All right. Verses 3. A fire devoured before them and a flame. Okay, I said this. Verse 4. The appearance of them. Joel prophesied of a people. The appearance of them is of horses. Ah, that's beautiful. And as horsemen, so shall they run. So it is not normal people, man. They will run. They will not walk. They will run. That means as horsemen, they will run. The appearance of them, before them is a fire and at the back. And they appear like horses. Like the noise of chariots on the top of mountains shall they leap. You leap. You leap is when you jump. On the top of the mountains. They will not be people, normal people. They will look like horses. The appearance of them. They, they have a noise like the noise of chariots. On top of the mountain shall they leap. The mountains is the people and the nations of God. That means they will jump on the nations. They will run on the nations. All right. They will have authority over the nations. And it says, like the noise of a flame of fire that devour the stumble. They will be like the voice of fire. 
like the voice of a flame of fire that devoured the stumple. A stumple is small sticks and grass. That means grass is normal. Normal people, normal situations, they will burn the noise of a flame of fire. You will, you will hear them when they come. When they come, Joel is prophesying, what? About the day of the Lord, what God is going to do, men will rise and afterwards the Holy Spirit will be in them and upon them. Listen, and it says, as strong people said, the vow of stumble, as strong people said in battle. It's people that are focused, they are in battle. All right, battle array. I want you to go now to Revelation 9 verse 7. <laughs> what? Here's Revelation 9 verse 7. All right, now we have said something about Joel, then we have said something about Peter, speaking of when the day has fully come. All right, we're going to read to you. It's a notable day. All right. Now I'm going to say something about John. Revelation 9 verse 7. Now there is a great star falling to the ground. <laughs> that star is in Revelation 9. Jesus Christ. Fall to the ground. Alright. Then he has a key this star and he opened a pit. Now when you are negative you see all things kind of negative. Yes, but uh, when you're positive and you're focused on Jesus Christ, you understand that Joel prophesied, Peter says this is that. He knew, and John also knew what Joel has said, and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. But they speak in images. They says, he said, John, all right, he opened a pit. Now, there came out, and the shapes of the locusts, the locusts, it's grasshoppers, were like unto horses, prepared unto battle, and their heads are as were crowns like gold, and on their heads were as it were crowns like gold, that means they have rulership. And their faces was the faces of men. So locusts is a grasshopper that eat. <coughs> it devour. But Joel says, I see a people look like horses and they burn like fire. <coughs> they bring destruction. A flame burn before them. And at the back, it's a wilderness that burn. So it's an other image of the same thing. The one is just, uh, I see grasshoppers eat. But they have crowns of gold. They eat. And the other ones, it's like fire burner. It's the same image, man. It's the same image. It's not something to come. It's book of Revelation. is speaking what Joel has said and Peter has said about the day of the Lord and afterwards the Holy Spirit that will fall upon men. Listen what it says. And their faces were the faces of men. And their hair is the hair of women. Why the hair of women? Because the, 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 the glory, a woman's glory is her hair. She must not cut it in the Old Testament because it's her glory. Now that means that the men has woman hair. That means they have the glory of God upon their heads. All right. And the teeth were as the teeth of lions. It's grasshoppers, locusts, mm. coming out of a pit. Yes, and they devour, devour. That's why Joel says, it's a terrible day, the day of the Lord cometh. And John says, in Revelation, it says, I was on that day of the Lord in the Spirit. And I saw what happened. What? Year and year. Revelation, the book of Revelation, is a manifestation and a speech of what prophets of the Old Testament said. And it says, the thief like lions, that means a lion, thief, 
uh, are dangerous, they devour. They eat like the fire burn of the stumbles. And they had breastplates on, as it were the breastplates of iron. That means we were protected by iron. Nothing can harm us. We have the breastplate of righteousness upon us. People of God with glory on the hair and heads. Yes, and teeth they devour. Fire. Oh boy, can you hear what I'm saying? And, and sound. And the sounds of their wings was the sound of chariots. That's this, that word. The sound of the, it's like chariots. Like many horses running to battle. Like many horses running for battle. You remember Joel? All right, Joel. When he says, like the noise of chariots on the top of the mountain, so they leap. This people that I see, that looks like horses. <laughs> like fire they will burn over the land. Can you see what happened to you when you are born again? Before you is a place like Eden with the glory of God upon you and within you. Matthew 3 verse 11 says Jesus. All right, I, all right, John spoke here. What about Jesus? Matthew 3 verse 11. And I indeed baptize you with water and repentance, unto repentance, but he that cometh after me, that is Jesus. He who I, who shoes I'm not worthy to bear, he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. He will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. That's why you need to tremble. You need that fire. That fire is for some people terrible because it burns. The wicked people must run because that fire burn. It's always destruction for them. But that fire will be fall upon the righteous people of God. And then they will be the lions and the, 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 the locusts and the horses that will run with this fire. All right. And they will be the flames of fire. Because I'm going to read to you Psalm 104 verse 4. God says, God makes his winds or his messengers, his messengers. God makes his winds, his spirits. God make his spirits or winds. All right? His messengers. And flames of fire, his servants. Am I a servant of God? Are you a servant of God? Yes, you are. And God makes you a flame of fire. And you are a wind. He makes you a messenger. Can you hear? I will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. And you will be like locusts. Like horses running on the mountains. With this fire upon you. Joel too. He's saying that. Awesome people of God. Awesome people of God. Um, it is a day of gloominess and glory and darkness that will come upon you. So I think I must go on to a next, a next time so that you can eat what I've said this so far. That you will not miss anything. Alright. It's already 40 minutes so may this word bless you. And then we're going on with Joel 2 verses um, 5 and 6, I think. All right. And see how awesome the scripture is. Speaking of the outpouring of Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. May you be blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.